saucers from Saturn Dr. Charles Gerson shrugged his shoulders as he sat behind his desk and looked at his military visitor. I'm getting a bit sick and tired of this entire affair. You have no right to keep that young man confined to this hospital. Physically, he is an excellent specimen of our modern day youth. We have given him a variety of mental tests. He doesn't rank as a genius. Just an ordinary 23-year-old fellow, with perhaps a vivid imagination. Colonel James P. Hinterman wasn't exactly satisfied with that answer. He would have much preferred a reply that Wilbert Byrne was mentally deranged. So he decided to challenge the attitude of the head of the Parker Thompson Hospital. When a young man tells a detailed story, of how he saw a flying saucer in the sky, chased it with a plane, forced it to land, and then talked with the commander. Don't you think something is wrong? The young man offered to take a test on a lie detector. So your men brought one in, that you borrowed from the police department. The experts said that the results showed the young man was telling the truth. Pointed out Dr. Charles Gerson. All this is highly irregular. His lawyer is downstairs with a writ of habeas corpus. And what about that reporter woman, Miss Jane Collins? You can't keep her here. The army officer pounded the desk with his fist. He was angry, for he well understood the position in which he towned himself. Don't think I'm a bullheaded and hard-hearted monster, he retorted. If that story hits the newspapers, do you realize what effect it will have on our public? A man definitely claims to have spoken with visitors from another planet. They talked to him about establishing diplomatic and commercial relationship. It's all highly irregular and must be done through official channels. The officer paused as he realized what he had said in the last sentence. It was almost as though he had conceded it might have happened. Then he looked for a way out. If that young man were only to admit he had a drink to many, it would help a lot. He never touches liquor. And he knows exactly how a flying saucer works down to the slightest detail. Snap back Dr. Charles Gerson. The door to the office opened suddenly and a young lady with red hair and fire in her eyes rushed right up the officer. She was followed by a soldier. You can't keep me here. She shouted. I know my constitutional rights. I have a good story. And you want to kill it. Well, you'll do it over my dead body. I couldn't detain her. Apologized the soldier. She said she would scratch my eyes out. You may leave, Corporal. Colonel Hinterman replied. I will take care of this young lady myself. Miss Jane Collins was the star reporter of that Herald News. The fact that her father owned the paper had absolutely nothing to do with her knack for getting a good story. She was about to give the army officer a good piece of her mind when the phone rang. That's for me, said Colonel Hinterman to Dr. Charles Gerson. I have been waiting for a report from Army Intelligence. He took the receiver off the hook, slouched back in his chair and listened for the next 10 minutes without saying a word. There was a smile playing over his lips when he replaced the receiver. I think it will be safe to release the young man. I wonder how much Miss Collins knows about this Wilbert Byrne. He has been flying for the past year, but he really wants to be a writer. He has sent a manuscript entitled Saucers from Saturn to a New York publisher, and it was accepted. This is nothing more than a cheap publicity stunt. I have to return to Washington. The case is closed.
There was a very sad look on the thin face of Wilbert Byrne as he sat in the car next to Miss Jane Collins. I'm not a first-class liar. He protested. Of course I did write a science fiction novel. In my story, there is a flying saucer that came from Saturn. The diameter is 165 feet. It is composed of a shell within a shell. The outer shell rotates. It is powered by an energy fuel called Cynodyne. I got all these ideas while sleeping as though messages were sent to me. And three days ago, while I was flying my small plane over Henderson's Valley, I saw this flying saucer. It landed and so did I. The commander name was Isto Garci and he spoke English. He said that he had been sending telepathic messages to me. I was a most receptive soul. There was a red light and Miss Jane Collins stopped her car. Then she turned her fury right on and gave a good dose of it to Wilbert Byrne. I have a good mind to dump you right here and let you walk home. I owe Colonel Hinterman an apology. In fact, I'm going to ask Dad to invite him as a house guest over the weekend. As for you, I never want to see you again in my life. You don't think I would fool you? Objected Wilbert Byrne. Why from the moment I first saw you, I fell madly in love with you. And if you marry me, you will be the richest girl in the world. Isto Garci told me he would give me Earth rights to Sunidine, and it would make me a most powerful person. They like me because my brain gets messages. Miss Jane Collins sighed. After all, Wilbert Byrne was what you could call handsome. And every girl has an eye on the greatest objective of all matrimony. Maybe there was a chance to reform this young man with a vivid imagination. Suppose you take me over to the exact spot where you saw that saucer. If you can prove your story, then I am for you, 100%. Since you are driving, I will give directions. Go straight down Main Street until you reach Morton's Boulevard. Then turn right until we reach the Old County Road. Then straight until we get to the valley. Two hours later, the car reached its destination. Miss Jane Collins went over every inch of the ground carefully. If the saucer landed, then there would be some marks. All I see are tracks made by the tires of your plane. What do we do now? Suppose you marry me and let me figure all that out. He said as he took her in his arms. She didn't object as his lips met hers. In fact, they were most cooperative, returning each kiss with added interest. You'll have to ask Daddy. She reminded him. But I don't think he will object. Colonel James P. Hinterman was house quest of the famous publisher of the Herald News. My daughter would have made a terrible mistake publishing that story, said a stout, middle-aged man. And that young man is coming here to ask me for my daughter's hand. Some nerve, yet I must give him credit. Trying to get national publicity for his book does show he has some sense in that head of his. Wilbur Byrne was most uncomfortable as he faced the army officer. And since there was a human heart inside Colonel Hinterman, he did his best to make the young man feel at ease. All I want is the first copy of your book when it is printed. I think I will enjoy reading that bit of fiction myself. The phone rang in the library room. Mr. Colonel Fens answered it and then called the army officer. Washington is calling you. Most urgent, they say. The colonel listened without saying a word. Finally, just before he replaced the receiver, he did say one word. Yes. His face was a deadly white, as though he had talked to a ghost. 
He looked at Wilbert Byrne and forced the words to come from his throat. Six flying saucers from Saturn just landed at our army field in Washington. They were under the command of somebody called Isto Garci. They want to speak only through one Wilbert Byrne. They say he is telepathic and understands them. Shall we leave now? There was a look of triumph on the young man's face as he to replied with one word. Yes! The end.